Hello and welcome to today's A3 tutorial. Uh, today's tutorial is going to be about a problem that's often called the ladder against a box. And in this problem, we have a, uh, a wall, a floor, and a one cubic meter box. Um, and a ladder. And the ladder is 10 meters long. And the objective, or the question, is what are the dimensions for all three contact points? And the, the easiest way to, to, to show what we're talking about here is to draw it out. So here's our problem. We have a wall and a floor. this and a box and the box has got as I said it's got a dimension of one meter and the question says if we've got a 10 meter long ladder we put it against it here what's the distance here and here where the ladder contacts the wall the corner of the box and the floor. So it's effectively asking, here's our ladder, and uh, as I said, it's 10 meters long. And the question is effectively asking, what's this distance and what's this distance? Now, in order to do this, I'm a big believer in visualizing your problems, and that's why I've taken the words and I've put them into a picture. But at this point here, we really need to start thinking about putting some labels on this picture and, and drawing it up and trying to get a visual understanding. So we know that that distance there is one meter. And we know that this distance here is one meter. But we do not know what this distance is. And we do not know this distance is and that's what we're trying to find out so what we can do is we can start putting some labels on this and I'm gonna label this unknown distance here as being distance X and this distance here we're gonna call that distance Y and obviously then therefore this distance here is 1 plus Y and this distance here is 1 plus X now the next thing we can do is we can look at this and we can see that we've got some right angled triangles. Here's one here, and here's one here. And we, we don't know what this distance here is because we don't know what proportion it is of our 10 meter length. But what we can do is we can apply Pythagoras theorem here because we've got this triangle, this length of x, this length of, of 1, and therefore Pythagoras' theorem tells us that this distance here is x squared plus 1, the square root of x squared plus 1. And this distance here is the square root of y squared plus 1, y and 1 y squared plus 1 squared, 1 squared minus 1, square root of that gives us that. Now, as soon as we've started, we've got two unknown variables here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start um, referencing these in terms of one un unknown variable. And the obvious thing here is to rename this distance here. Instead of calling it the square root of y squared plus 1, we can call it 10 minus the square root of x squared plus 1. So basically we know that this is the square root of x squared plus 1, we know this is 10, so therefore this distance here is 10 minus this distance. And so now we've got this distance defined not in terms of y, but in terms of x. Okay, so when we look at this, we can hopefully see something here. And that is, 
um, an observation. And that observation is that this is a similar triangles problem. And the, the theory of similar triangles says that if we've got two similar triangles, like these ones are, this triangle here is similar to this triangle, it says that the relationship between the short leg over the long leg for each triangle is the same ratio. And so if we look at this triangle up here, we can see that the short leg, we're going to call that one X, and the long leg, which we're going to look at the hypotenuse of that triangle, is the square root of X squared plus 1. And that relationship equals, if we look at the big triangle, the short leg here is 1 plus X, and the long leg is our 10. So, what we can do here is we can cross multiply this, and that will give us the square root of x squared plus 1 times 1 plus x equals 10x. So we've, done a crop, we've got that expression here, we simply cross multiply to yield this. Now, we've got a square root term here, and the whole objective of what we're trying to do here is simplify this down, because in all of these expressions we've only got one unknown, and that's x. So we're going to get rid of the square root term, and that would give us x squared plus 1 over 1 plus x squared, ah, all squared, equals 100x squared. So all I've done there is I've squared everything to get rid of that term there. And now if we look at this here, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this out. I'm going to take it quite slowly. So x squared plus 1 gives us 1 plus x times 1 plus x, oh, x equals 100x squared. And so what we can do now is expand this term out. Okay, 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times x is x x times 1 is x, x times x, x squared. And I can simplify that quite easily. x squared plus 1 is x squared plus 2x plus 1. So we now have these terms here. What we can now do is expand this out. So x squared times x squared is x foot to the 4. x squared times 2x is 2x to the cube. x squared times 1 is x squared. 1 times x squared. 1 times 2x. 1 times 1. That's what we did there. The next step we can again simplify. So this gives us x to the 4 plus 2x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 100x squared. What we can now do is we can take uh, the make resolve all this to equal zero. So we can subtract the next step here, minus 100x. 
and that will give us x cubed plus 2x, uh, sorry, x to the 4, 2x cubed minus 98x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now, we've now got all of this solved down to what's called a quartic. And in our quartic, uh, we can solve a quartic. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to do, but it can be done. Uh, we need to understand that this is the value of A, this is the value of B, this is the value of C, this is the value of D, and this is the value of E. So A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals minus 98, D equals 2, and E equals 1. Now, the question now becomes, how do we solve a quartic? There are two methods, well, it's more than two, there are actually a lot. I'm going to look at two of them. Um, uh, the first one, uh, we're not actually going to do it, but I'll just tell you about it. Um, when I've told you about it, you'll understand why I'm not going to do it. Okay, so the, to solve the, 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 the first way says the roots, x1 and x2, um, is, it's, a, it's a fairly large expression. Um, And those roots equal negative of b over 4a minus s plus or minus a half times the square root of minus 4s squared minus 2p plus q over s. And the next couple of roots, x3 and x4, very similar expression, minus b over 4a plus s plus or minus a half times the square root minus 4s squared minus 2p minus q over s. So that's how you get two roots out of that expression and two roots out of that expression. Um, and then the question becomes, how do you, we, we, we know what A and B is, we've already found them, and all this sort of stuff, and C and D and E, we don't know what the value for Q is, we don't know what the value for S is, we don't know what the value for P is. Um, so P is found by uh, 8AC minus 3B squared over 8A squared value for Q is B cubed minus 4ABC plus 8A squared D all over 8A cubed. Um, and the value for S is a half of the square root of minus two thirds of P plus 1 over 3a, all timed q plus delta naught over q. And to find q is the cube root of delta 1 plus the square root of minus 27 of delta all over 2. And so it goes on. And finally, you, after several more iterative of these steps, you can actually get the values that you can put A, B, C, D, E, and E into that will give you these delta 1s and deltas, which in turn will give you Qs, which will give you Ss, which you can get Ps and Qs, which you can then stick into these equations. And then you can get your roots. Now, I'm not going to do that, simply because I don't have enough paper, um, and we've all got better things to do with our time. So uh, a much 
easier, easier way is to simply do it by going to an online calculator. Uh, the one that I used is 1728.org and they have a, um, a quartet calculator. Quartet.htm and all you do there is you punch these numbers in and it'll give you the four roots. Um, and it comes back and it says that our four roots, by using this, it says our four roots are 0 0.111, 8.937, minus 0 0.091, and minus 10.95. Now, couple of things leap out as here. The first one is we're after two numbers, uh, we've got four roots. The second one, and these are negatives, obviously we can't have negative height. And these are unrealistic, so we can forget about them. Makes life nice and easy. We've got these two roots left over. So if we think about these two roots and think about what our problem was, our problem back up here, one, one, and this is telling us that this height here is uh, 0 0.11 and 8.937. And we know that that's 10. So we can prove uh, if this is going to work. And again, we come back to Pythagoras. If this is true, then we know that 1 plus 8.937 squared plus 1 plus 0 0.111 squared should equal 10 squared if this is true. So we'll see if that does. We can simply punch these numbers there um, and we know that this here will come out to be uh, 9.9 and 1 plus 1 blah blah squared comes to that to be 1.234 and that equals 99.98 which in my book is pretty close. So our sol this is our solution, our solutions for our heights here and our lengths 9.98 937 and 1.111 meters. These are our solutions. So, what's been done there? Just to quickly recap, we had a problem with a lot of unknown variables we were able to use a similar triangle theory to resolve it down to a quartic. We could have gone through and spent the rest of the weekend, and in this case, in, um, where I am in New Zealand, this is actually a long weekend, a three-day weekend. I probably would have spent most of it trying to solve that quartic, um, and you probably would as well. Or we could just punch the numbers into a calculator, and this gives us our roots, which in turn gives us our solution. So... Thank you very much for watching. Uh, as usual, if you've got any questions, drop me an email. Uh, and I look forward to uh, hearing from you. Thank you.